What's going on everybody? It's your rifle here. Long time no video. I know guys. And I'm terribly sorry I haven't been uploading here lately. It's been driving me nuts that I haven't been able to upload you guys content. I've been going through some personal problems. You know, just pretty much life struggles. So, But in today's video I'm going to be covering the three new subclasses that are actually going to be released here soon on September 15, 2015. Before I get started with this though, if you could, please show some love and support by liking the video. It's much appreciated guys. I do spend a lot of time creating these for you all. Alright, so to get this started, there's going to be three new subclasses that you're going to be able to obtain through a quest in the Taken King. I'm not sure exactly what the quest name is going to be called, but that's how you're going to be able to obtain the new subclass. The new subclasses are called Sunbreaker for the Titan, Stormcaller for the Warlock, and Night Stalker for the Hunter. So the Hunter's new subclass equals Void, the Titan's new subclass equals Solar, and lastly the Warlock's new subclass equals Arc. I mean, they all get one new elemental damage subclass, which is also pretty nice. I mean, it's also nice to see that they're incorporating the storyline to unlock these subclasses. Apparently, you're going to be doing something special. I don't know exactly what you are going to be doing, but I do know that we're going to be going on Merc... Bruh. But I do know we are going to be going on Mercury, so maybe I have a hunch to where we're going to be unlocking our new subclasses. I have a feeling it's going to be on Mercury. I just got this weird feeling. Maybe at the lighthouse. I don't know exactly. To start off, I'm going to be starting with the Hunter's subclass called Night Stalker. This subclass looks awesome. The creative director, Luke Smith, actually had described this new Hunter class as something like a point guard, he said. He can score, sure, but he excels at assists. The Night Stalker is the Hunter's first true support class designed for this sort of crowd control that makes it easier for the Titans and Warlocks in the crew to score their kills. Or hey, maybe even another Hunter. The Night Stalker's super is the Shadow Shot, which does a large amount of damage at once to a single target and also tethers nearby enemies to a Void Anchor, slowing them down for others to clean up. So basically, it's kind of like a web of some sort. It traps and slows down the enemies. The new subclass also gets a smoke grenade, which is actually a melee attack. I'll be going over all the perks of the subclasses at the end of this video, but for now I'm just showing you guys gameplay and talking about the subclasses. And in my opinion, out of all the melee abilities for these new subclasses, the Hunters is definitely the most creative. I mean, when you go to melee attack an enemy, it creates a smoke effect for you to have a chance to get away, or hey, for you to do some crazy ninja skills on that enemy that you affected with your smoke attack. This melee ability definitely suits the Hunter perfectly. Whoever thought of it, I have to say, genius freaking idea. And lastly, also something new for the subclass that comes with an evade ability, which this will be very useful in the PvP world. It's basically like a phase barrel roll, guys. It's insane looking. I will be going over all the perks within these subclasses near the end of the video as well. Right now, I'm just giving you a quick synopsis of each super and, you know, a little bit of gameplay behind it as well. All right, so that's a quick synopsis of the Hunter subclass. Now on to the Warlock subclass, which is called the Stormcaller. This super looks absolutely amazing in this subclass. The Warlock's new Stormcaller is an offensive machine focused on chain lightning and a certain amount of sizzle. The Warlock already has a powerful offensive super for PvP, but this one will be better than the Nova Bomb when it finally hits. The Stormcaller's super is called the Storm Trance, which lets the Warlock float around as you guys can see, and also firing lightning out of the Warlock's hands and zapping everything in sight. Stormcaller also gets an arc grenade that can chain to nearby enemies, and also an interesting passive ability that lets grenade kills reduce melee cooldown and vice versa. Of all the new subclasses out of them all, I have to say this one looks the most interesting and I am a hunter player. I mean, it just looks amazing how he's just floating around, it's crazy looking. But I guess I can't finalize that decision until I'm actually playing with all the supers. But on to the next subclass, which is for the Titan, it's called Sunbreaker. I know, how original, right? This new subclass looks insane, guys, and I'm not gonna lie, all the new subclasses have its perks. But this subclass comes with the Hammer of Soul Super sheathing the titan in fiery armor and letting him hurl flaming hammers all over the place. There is also a new solar grenade that travels in a straight line in front of the titan, and also a new solar melee attack with the titan's subclass. Titans love to melee, and the Sunbreaker gets some interesting passive melee perks that could supercharge the Sunbreaker's flaming fists. The titan seems to be more of a defensive class at the moment, but the Sunbreaker appears really designed to push the character out into the forefront as a frontline juggernaut, if you will. So now it's basically like a mix of defensive and offensive. You're gonna have this fiery armor shield, but also some freaking amazing flaming hammers that can knock your opponents out. 
and also not to mention to set them on fire and to make them disintegrate. But yeah guys, all in all though, all these subclasses look great. Alright, now since we've gotten to take a little bit of a glimpse of what the supers are going to look like in gameplay, I guess I'll go over the perks that are within these subclasses. I'll try to go over these as quick as possible for you guys and for the sake of the length of the video too. So let's get this started. Starting off once again with the Hunter subclass. The following skill tree that I'm going to be showing you is from E3 2015 and is also subject to change before the release of the Taken King. So these aren't all finalized, but for the majority these should be in the subclass. Alright, so now let's get this started with the Hunter subclass. Starting with the grenades. The Hunter will get a spike grenade. It's a grenade that attaches to any surface and emits a torrent of damaging void light. Sounds pretty interesting. Up next is a slash grenade, a grenade that creates a horizontal wall of burning void light. Also sounds pretty cool to use. And lastly, the vortex grenade, a grenade that creates a vortex which continually damages enemies inside the spear. Reading that, that kind of sounds similar to the warlock's grenade. I wonder how that's going to play out. Pretty sure it's just going to work just like the warlock's grenade. But anyways, for the movement, you do get double jump, and also you do get triple jump with this subclass, which is good to know. And as for the super goes for this subclass, it is called Shadow Shot, and what it does is it tethers a large group of foes to a void anchor, slowing and silencing them for your fire team. And the modifiers for the super, starting off with, I might butcher this word, inextricable, a portion of damage taken by one tethered target is based to all other tethered targets. That seems pretty useful. Next modifier is, wait for it. Which what this does is Shadow Shot creates a proximity tether that triggers when targets are close. Now, that sounds kind of interesting. And also Gloam Ranger. Unite your allies, it says. Reduces incoming damage and buffs outgoing damage for your tethered fire team. All in all though, some pretty interesting modifiers. For the melee with the Hunter, it says Smoke. Throw smoke to slow and disorient those within its clouds. That just sounds freaking amazing to use with the Hunter. Anyways, for the modifiers with this melee attack, Smog significantly increases the size of smoke, allowing you to affect multiple targets. And Venom adds a toxic that suffocates enemies within smoke. So I'm guessing that's going to be like a lingering effect as long as they are in the smoke. Snare allows smoke to stick to surfaces, detonating when enemies are near. Now that sounds interesting. How in the world is that going to play out? Anyways, the attribute modifiers, as you guys can see, it focuses on toughness and speed, battle recovery and speed, and also battle recovery and toughness. For the ability modifiers for your super, as you guys can see, Uncanny Archer, every target tethered increases your armor and recovery stats by one, until Shadow Shot is next recharged. It also reduces the time until next Shadow Shot. Anyways, up next is the Shadow Trapper. Tethers have increased range, duration, and potency, which that sounds pretty useful. I mean, say like you shoot an enemy, but the enemies are off in the distance. That can still end up slowing down another enemy. Or hey, what if you are in PvP and you go to shoot an enemy with your Shadow Shot, and you never know who could be nearby that it could affect. All in all, it sounds like a great modifier. And lastly, Well Provisioned gain an additional grenade, and significantly increases grenade durations. And lastly, some more attribute modifiers, recovery, armor, agility, and also toughness, plus five armor, and focused on maximum battle recovery, plus four recovery, and plus one agility. But last up on the list for the Hunter's subclass perks is also ability modifiers, starting with the Keen Scout, sneak faster, gain enhanced motion tracker, and mark targets you damage. Allies get waypoints to marks. Now that is going to be extremely useful. That is going to be a perk that I'm definitely going to be trying out. Sounds like a good team play perk. Up next is Rapid Shot. After firing your initial Shadow Shot arrow, you may fire up to two explosive arrows in quick succession. Dang, now that also sounds freaking awesome. Goodness gracious. And lastly, for one of the perks I am most excited about out of this subclass, is called Shade Step, which gains you an evade. It's going to be extremely useful in the PvP world, guys. I already know it. I can already see the hate coming for the Hunters. Alright, but that's about wrapping up the Hunter subclass. Up next, I'm going to be going over to Stormcaller subclass, which is for the Warlocks. Starting off with the grenades, once again guys, these are not finalized, but more than likely they will be within the subclass when this actually releases. Alright, now starting off with the grenades for the Warlock within this new subclass called the Stormcaller. As you guys can see, the Warlock is going to be getting a lightning grenade. A grenade that sticks to any surface, periodically emitting bolts of lightning, which sounds pretty similar to the Titan's grenade, if you guys know about that one grenade that sticks to walls or sticks to whatever and continues to shoot out lightning out of the grenade, I have a feeling that this is going to work very similar. Up next is the Deluge Grenade. This grenade calls down a localized lightning storm. 
that's going to look freaking awesome to see. And lastly, Pulse Grenade, a grenade that periodically damages enemies inside its explosive radius. All right now on with the movement, this will have glide, so you can double jump in midair to activate glide, obviously. And also it's going to have balanced glide, it upgrades glide to provide bonuses to both speed and control. Unfortunately, there is not going to be no blink for this subclass, which in my opinion would be freaking cool to see. I mean, running around with the freaking Stormcaller super and just teleporting places would be nice to see, but hey, it might be for a reason why they didn't add blink to this subclass. But anyways, the super ability once again is called Storm Trance, which basically you're firing arc lightning from your hands, and if you guys didn't know or realize by now, the Titan is solar, the Hunter is void, and lastly the Warlock is all about arc for the new subclasses. They all get a new elemental damage subclass. The modifiers for the subclass, starting off with Landfall, on casting Storm Trance, fire a bolt of lightning into the ground, creating a devastating shockwave under you. So basically like a shock nova takes out enemies that are around you or maybe near you when you first use your super. I can see that being kind of useful, especially against the Hive. Up next is called the Superconductor, which doubles your Storm Trance's lightning's chaining capabilities. So you'll be able to affect multiple targets while using your super. Because when you are releasing that lightning damage on an enemy, it can chain lightning to other enemies as well. Up next though is called the Electric Glide. While in Storm Trance, you'll be able to press a certain button to teleport you to a short distance in the direction you are moving. Which hey, I spoke too soon. Looks like you will be able to be teleporting around while using this super. Nice! So that's why they decided not to add Blink. This super automatically comes with a teleporting ability. That's nice. Although having Blink all the time still would be noiser, but still. At least they added some type of teleporting ability with the Warlock. I mean, he is supposed to be the magical guy. Makes sense. Up next though, the Warlock is actually getting a new melee ability called Thunderstrike. Thunderstrike obviously it delivers an electrocuting melee strike to close range targets. The modifiers for this melee ability is called Chain Lightning. Your Thunderstrike chains from the struck target to another nearby enemy. Another modifier, I might butcher this word, I think it's called Tempestuous, which what this does is it allows your Thunderstrike to have greater range. So you'll be able to freaking melee enemies that are not exactly close range material, if you will. You'll be able to melee them a little bit further. I guess it still will be close range, but you'll be able to have a little bit of a distance on your melee. And lastly, another modifier for this melee ability is Rising Storm. And what this does is actually hits with the Thunderstrike, charges your super ability, and melee energy. So you'll be able to charge up for another freaking hiya and get some more super, you know? That's how that's gonna work out. Alright, so up next is the attribute modifiers, as you guys can see, Arcane Wisdom, Arcane Spear, and Arcane Force, which as you guys can see, increases toughness and speed, or battle recovery and toughness, or battle recovery and speed. It's however your preferences are, I mean, that isn't what you guys are actually interested in, you guys are more interested in the kind of new perks that we're going to be able to use. And as you guys can see, we got some more new ability modifiers. Starting off with the rain check, when revived, you trigger a shockwave disorienting all nearby enemies. I don't really know if that's actually that useful unless you actually die a lot, but if you do die, you might want to use this perk. I mean, whenever you do get revived, you'll trigger a little shockwave. You never know if it's going to be handy. I guess it all depends on what kind of battle you're in. Anyways, up next is the uninsulated, which what this does is incoming melee attacks shock the attacker. Now that's pretty interesting. I'm sure the Titan's going to love that. The next perk is called Inclement Weather. Getting a grenade kill recharges your melee, and also getting a melee kill recharges your grenade. So vice versa. And now the part that you guys are least interested in, once again, the attribute modifiers. As you guys can see, focused on all attributes, focused on speed, focused on toughness at all costs. Alrighty, now for a little bit of the more interesting stuff, and this is actually the end of the Warlock subclass. So guys, listen carefully, because this is the end of the Warlock subclass perks, which these are ability modifiers, starting off with the Gathering Storm. Storm Trance actually charges faster when allies are in close proximity. That's going to be extremely handy. Did I just read that right? So my super is going to recharge faster as long as allies are nearby? Heck yeah! And also when Storm Trance is active, nearby enemies take damage. So basically you're just shocking opponents, not even actually targeting those enemies. You're just shocking everything around you. The next perk is called Grease Lightning. Enemies damaged by your grenades chain deadly lightning to other nearby enemies. And lastly, for the last perk on the Warlock subclass is called Wellspring. When cast with full grenade and Thunderstrike energy, Storm Trance restores your health to full and drains slower. 
It's pretty interesting. All in all, though, the Warlock's new super also looks freaking amazing, guys. And as you guys can see, the perks within the Soap Glass also look pretty promising as well. All right, lastly, but certainly not least, I'm going to be going over the Titan's subclass perks. Once again, the Titan's subclass is called the Sunbreaker. And the grenades for this subclass, you actually get a fusion grenade, a grenade that causes bonus damage when attached to its target, match grenade, grenade explosion sends forward a burning line of fire, huh, that sounds pretty cool, and lastly of course they would add this, an incendiary grenade, how creative, an explosive grenade that sets enemies on fire causing additional damage to them. I have a feeling that is going to be pretty handy, guys, in the PvP world. I mean, setting your enemies on fire, give them that little bit of lingering effect, which annoys the opponent, and go in for the kill. I think that'll be a nice grenade to use in the PvP world. The match grenade sounds more of like a PvE style grenade. I mean, what kind of actual player online would just run right into a straight burning line of fire? But then again, there probably are some players that would just run right into a burning line of fire, but I really don't see the match grenade being as useful in the PvP world as the incendiary grenade. It seems like that grenade, or the fusion grenade, you guys know how the fusion grenade is in the PvP world, either incendiary or the fusion is going to be probably preferably the best grenade to use in the pvp world but hey that's just my opinion i have no idea how this match grenade is going to play out but it seems like it's more of a pve style grenade for the movement abilities for the titan lift is going to be in there of course jump and press again while in there to activate your lift with the titan i mean of course that's going to be in there but the modifiers for the lift as you guys can see increased height increased control and also catapult upgrades lift to provide a strong initial burst of momentum all right now for the part that you guys are most interested in the super ability called hammer of soul Summon a flaming hammer and wreck destruction down upon your enemies. The modifiers for this super ability, starting off with high noon, the higher your health is, the more hammers you can throw and the bigger their impact are. How freaking convenient. I mean, that's nice. Normally someone that has a super in the PvP world typically does have full health or the other players are running from that person because they've activated their super, so that's gonna be nice. The next modifier for this super is called Sun Charge, which is basically just a rip off of the Shoulder Charge, except this one's called Sun Charge and it's probably on steroids compared to the Shoulder Charge. I mean, as you guys can see, you press a certain button to hurl yourself forward, crushing enemies that are close. And lastly, Conflagration. Ignite the world, creating sunspots where your hammer of soul impacts. Now that sounds extremely useful in the PvE world. Up next, I'm going to be going over a new melee ability called Sunstrike, which what this does, you guys won't ever guess it. You ignite your enemies with a heavy solar strike. Who would have thought? But the modifiers for this melee ability, starting off with the melting point, which what this does actually is pretty daggone useful, guys. It burns away your target's defenses. Target takes more damage from both you and your allies. So basically, your strike is going to weaken their defense to allow you to do more freaking damage. Heck yeah! Heck yeah, that's nice! That's going to be a nice PvE perk. The next modifier is called Fulminator. Your Sunstrike melee releases a solar explosion on hit, igniting enemies within the blast, and also kills create a sunspot around you. And lastly, the next modifier for this melee ability is called Stoke the Forge. Natively, it reduces the cooldown of your Sunstrike melee, and getting a killing blow with the Sunstrike instantly recharges it. Up next is the least interesting about the subclass, the attribute modifiers. As you guys can see, training focused on battle recovery and toughness, training focused on speed and toughness, and also training focused on battle recovery and speed. But anyways, now for some more ability modifiers. Fleet Fire, enemies brought down by your fire grant you bonus agility and reload speed for a short time, and this can stack up to three times. Up next is called Tempering. Grenade and melee abilities cool down faster when Hammer of Soul is fully charged. And lastly, Rethed in Flames. Hammer of Soul lasts longer and you gain an overshield while standing near a sunspot. Holy guacamole. Do not go near a Titan when they are standing near a sunspot. Obviously, they are standing near their sunspot for a reason. As you guys now know, there is a perk that makes you gain a freaking overshield. So be careful against those sunspots, guys. Up next is the attribute modifiers once again. Training focus on all attributes, training focus on maximum battle recovery, and training focus on raw speed. But lastly, for the last perks on the Titan's new Sunbreaker subclass are some more ability modifiers. Flame Seeker, your Hammer of Soul will alter its flight path to seek out your enemies. Huh, how convenient. Cauterize, enemies brought down by your fire will regenerate your health. And lastly, Wild Fire, enemies brought down by your hammer explode, catching other nearby enemies on fire. This subclass just sounds like absolute destruction. I can already picture it. 
But yeah, guys, that's about wrapping up all these subclasses. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this information I have provided you guys. I got this information from Destinypedia, and also I got these gameplay clips from the developers of Destiny themselves. They actually released this gameplay from E3, and they made a little video about it. So hey, I thought I would break down the video trailer and, well, show off the subclasses and what they are going to be containing. Hopefully this video was enjoyable once again guys, and I'm going to leave a friendly reminder at the end of the video like I always do. If you could, please leave a simple like. It is much appreciated guys. The support continues to help me grow, and it is once again extremely appreciated by me. Thanks everybody. Seriously, you don't know how much you've actually helped out my channel, and for that I can't thank you enough. But I'm out of here though everyone. As always, remember to stay safe everybody, and well don't sleep in pee. That's very important information. Peace out.